and welcome back to my channel and welcome to episode four of Curiosities at the London Natural History Museum. Now for today's episode, we're exploring the Titanosaur, which is their latest exhibition. And you can see it behind me and you can get an idea of the grand size of this. Now, this is the largest dinosaur ever, but also one of the largest creatures ever to roam the earth. Now at eight meters high and 37 meters long, this is a colossal beast. And for those of you who don't understand meter metrics, it is 120 foot long, like this is humongous. Now the bones you see behind me, they're actually cast from the original that was found in Argentina about 10 years ago. Now from the 280 bones they found, you would think that would be a complete skeleton, but that was actually missing a few pieces. And so what the scientists did and the artists, they replicated and remodeled the pieces that weren't found originally in the ranch where it was discovered. Now, it wasn't discovered on its own. There were six of them, and out of these six, none of them had a skull. So they actually had to work really hard to create the skull that we see on um, this exhibition here, and it's based off one of their smaller living relatives, and it was then rescaled for size. Now, one question that always interested me that may have crossed your guys' minds as well is why did none of these six dinosaurs that were found at the ranch have a skull? How come they had all their other bones? Well, not all of them, but you understand what I mean. How did they have most of their skeleton, but not their skull remains? Now this comes down to probably bone density. So if we look at kind of the real bones here, they were extremely thick, you know, especially the arm bones, you know, and some of the other ones. So they probably had a better chance at being preserved in the fossil record. Whereas the skulls were very small in comparison and probably also quite thin. Um, so over time, these just didn't survive. And so it's very common actually with the family of dinosaur sauropods that the skulls aren't found, which is a really funny thing. So all the dinosaur remains found in sauropods most of the time have no heads. So here you can see the actual skull that they've put on the replica. So this is a Patago Titan is the official name, but it doesn't actually have like a cute name like you have Hope. Um, the whale, you've got Dippy the Diplodocus, or you've got Sophie the Stegosaurus. So this dinosaur does need to be named at some point. But I thought I would give you an actual front on view because I have been talking in front of the rear view. Now, this wasn't by choice, even though how many times do you actually get to talk in front of the world's largest butt? Um, but this was actually because in the exhibition hall, the lighting was just 10 times better at the other end. Hence why I took advantage of that. And I thought you guys wouldn't mind. Um, so here we can actually see kind of some of those bones that are on display here. And what's amazing is you can walk beneath them and actually get up close and personal. So the thing is, they've on every single individual cast here, they've hand painted them, they've like added every little detail to actually make them look exactly like the original bones. So you can walk beneath them, you can look up as if, you know, this creature is walking over you, even though you would never actually have a skeletal or titanosaur over the top of you. But that's the beauty of this exhibition is it really gives you an amazing experience. And you can see up close here with some of the leg and arm bones, they are just incredible, the detail. And even the feet, so you can really walk around them. And there's lots of different artists' impressions of what these beasts look like. Um, you can see kind of that long neck and you can also see the side comparison with humans. Um, but there's a few interpretations and I just think they're a wonderful way to visualize kind of what these bones would have looked like as a full blown creature. And so you can see like some interpretations have quite a thick neck. Others here you can see they're very tall with also some pterosaurs. But the exhibition also hosts some genuine bones. So these here are from an arm of a titanosaur. So these actually came out of the ranch in Argentina. So they are obviously protected, but it's amazing to see kind of the detail of the real bones compared to the cast that you've just seen. And there's not much difference. Like I'm pretty sure if you had these size, side by side, apart from the massive weight difference, um, you wouldn't really notice it. Although saying about the weight, the cast still weigh over two tons. So the engineer still had quite the task to reinforce the floor, but you can imagine how much um, all the real bones would have weighed. And I, I mean, that would have been one heck of a process. So here we can actually see some photos from the original dig. So these were found in 2012 at the ranch in Argentina in Patagonia, but it didn't take a year to get them out. It took multiple years. So it wasn't until 2015 that they were actually started the excavation process. And because of the sheer number and size of these colossal bones, it took many years to actually get them all out and then prep them all. So you can see here that they've cast them in special plaster casts to transport them back to the museum. Um, and then once they were prepped, they then 3D scanned them because what this meant is they could make a really accurate 
replica of the bones, which is what you get to see in the London History Museum, but also in some others um, dotted around the place as well. So this creature, when it was alive, would have weighed a whopping 57 tonnes, which is about equivalent to nine African elephants. So it really was a beast. And it's from the sauropod dinosaur family, which is the same as Dippy the Diplodocus, but this is so much larger than any other sauropod. So it really is huge. And you can come to the History Museum and actually touch it and get an idea of the size. And what's amazing about this cast is if you actually look at the original bones, which they also have a few of them dotted around the um, exhibition, they put the detail there. So they're not just cast, they are identical replicas. So these humongous creatures had very small heads for their size. And if we analyze the teeth and the way they sort of ate, we suspect that they would have raked the leaves off of plants. So with the neck, they could have gone for foliage kind of high, medium, and low. And they would have just like used their teeth like a rake and just pull that foliage off and then swallow it whole. And they would have had to consume hundreds and hundreds of kilograms of food a day just to survive. So these dinosaurs roamed our Earth during the Cretaceous period, which was 100 million years ago. And even though they're the largest dinosaur, they were still preyed upon. So here we have a bone um, from an, it's a replica of one of the pieces that was found when they did the excavation. And it's actually got a tooth mark in. So whether they were bitten before they died or after, we don't know, but they were definitely food for other dinosaurs. But titanosaurs, they ate a purely plant-based diet. And being the size they are with such a tiny head, they would have spent most of their day just eating to sustain that body mass. So the lifespan of these creatures is actually unknown, but we do know they had an incredibly fast growth rate. So if we actually look at some eggs that have been found of titanosaurs, the eggs vary in size, but are mainly around 15 centimeters in diameter. Now that is a tiny egg for a dinosaur that is 37 meters in length. So these eggs, the hatchlings would have been around the same sort of size as a human baby. Now, considering that size compared to the adult size, you can imagine just how much growth had to be done to get to a full-size adult. And they expect that that amount of growth would have been done in about a 30-year period. So here we can see a replica of one of the eggs found of a titanosaur. So it is incredibly tiny compared to the size. So you can see my hand here, the scale. So they were really minuscule eggs but they probably took the approach of many small eggs rather than a few larger eggs. So instead of putting all their energy into a few offspring that may not make it, they thought they would go for kind of the other approach where lots of them and then they could kind of, the you know, strongest ones would survive. And then I just thought I'd include a little bit about the construction process. So I'll link the full video down below if you'd want to watch the Natural History Museum's time lapse um, from start to finish. But it was such a task to actually get this skeleton up. And I don't think people realise that they are put up in individual pieces. So each of these pieces comes to the museum as a single piece and then they are pieced together. So this is hundreds and hundreds of replica bones that have to be carefully and accurately joined together, not to mention the sheer size and weight of these pieces. So I think it's a really interesting and amazing process to watch just the engineering side. So this exhibition is running until January 2024 and if you do get the chance to visit London and this marvellous exhibition I really do recommend it because it's really interactive so you can actually touch everything, they've got games, they've got so many replicas and specimens, it's just amazing to kind of walk around it. But that's what I got for you guys today so I really hope you enjoyed exploring the titanosaur um, with me today and don't forget to comment down below if there's anything else you'd love to see or explore at the History Museum and I'll try and get on it. But thank you again for watching like and subscribe for more I'll link my social media down below as well if you'd like to follow me on there but hopefully I'll see you next week thanks for watching